Ladies and gentlemen, this is Yuri X and this is how a nuclear war will start minute by minute by Channel Kuzgaza Nutshell. Yeah, they have done this minute by minute videos before, right? Yeah, this is going to be really good. I guess they are like they say minute by minute they'll just you know go through how the war will start and I guess all the way to end. <laughs> Probably uh, just a wasteland or some shit by the end because that's what's going to happen, right? World War 4 is going to fought with you know stick and stones. So basically there you go. So yeah, nuclear war first of all. So basically World War 3, let's be honest, right? Nuclear war will result in that. But there's a uh, bigger reason behind that. Let's let's see that uh, two countries fight. They use nuclear weapons. Most countries will have allegiance with one another or alliances whatever, right? And at that point even if you don't have alliances, there will be a fear like if we can use it here, he can use it here, right? Uh, if a certain country can nuke this country, they can nuke us as well. So this is ah, there are going to be panic attacks suddenly. So a nuclear attack will always result in some form of not full blown World War Three or whatever. But yeah, this would be disastrous. So yeah, it's going to be interesting watching this. Let's watch it. Mr. President, nuclear missiles will strike our country in 14 minutes. I know it's your first day in office, so I'm going to walk you through it. But you're the only one who can authorize <laughs> our nuclear retaliation in response, and you've only got a few minutes. Look at those hands and finger. I will make this war the most spectacular war of time, the best war you will see. Yeah, that's what's coming in 2024. Trump. To make a decision, as you know, tensions have escalated rapidly in the past few days. Today's joint allied aerial defense exercise began just minutes before we detected the launch. A simple misunderstanding, maybe. We assume the sudden attack is meant to neutralize as many of our nuclear forces as possible. But that doesn't matter now. Missiles are in the air, and we can't shoot <laughs> yes, all of them down. Apparently. Why? Because intercontinental ballistic missiles are basically rockets launched yeah. into space before re-entering the atmosphere over their target and releasing many different warheads, higher and faster than anything you can send after them. We need to get you. Yeah, the fun fact about ICBMs are, unless they are new, I mean, if they are new, sure, uh, it will need, need, you know, need uh, warheads inside. But if they are not intended as nukes, but simply uh, target destroying things, it doesn't need any kind of a like a bomb inside, right? ICBM are that fast, right? Just their, you know, uh, just their speed enough, right? Uh, would be so powerful that they will automatically clear, you know, create an explosion, just like how asteroids do it, right? Their, uh, you know, momentum speed is so fast that it will have higher energy than their atomic strength. So we'll just explode as soon as it hits anything. It doesn't need any kind of bomb inside. But yeah, nuclear bomb, like, yeah, it's different. Due to the bunker. Here's what we know. <laughs> Four minutes ago, our new infrared monitoring satellites detected 112 bursts consistent with ICBM launches from the enemy's inner territories. For some reason, only 20 of their 80 underground nuclear silos seem to have fired, so we suspect most of them were transporter erector launches. You know, trucks with big missiles on them. It's unclear why they didn't use all their silos. They might just not work after more than 30 years, or they might be keeping them in reserve. The fog of war is keeping... That is so true. Oh my God, that is so true. A lot of, uh, you know, nuclear arsenals are like barely working, right? There's a whole report about it and shit. First of all, somebody made fun about them, like how they're still using floppy disk and things like that. But there's a reason behind it. So it's unhackable. They're using old technology, so it's off the grid, right? Using all this shit. But apart from that, still that they need real maintenance, right? There's a high chance some of them might not even work, which is kind of effed up. Many things unclear. Is it though? I don't know. Aerospace Command thinks the ICBMs are targeting our nuclear command centers, silos, and major air force and navy bases, ending this war before we have a chance to act. Hmm. The enemy's strategic doctrine prioritizes military targets and our nuclear weapon systems, but their secondary targets are our industry and infrastructure. All Wait a minute, how, uh, isn't supposed to be most uh, nuclear silos are supposed to be like secret? Maybe you'll know some of them, but how the fuck do you know all of them? Refineries, power stations, and deep water ports, all located near or in major population centers. Yep. We won't know the exact casualty count for a few weeks. Deaths from the blast and burns may be a few million today. It's morning rush hour, and there's not much to be done for people stuck in traffic. 
people in major exactly man see the people like make you know major infrastructure major things right like factories power plants and things like things that keep the society going on people build major cities around them like <laughs> if some kind of attack happen you will be the like a threat of it i don't know it always felt weird to me like proper major cities sure like you know there should be more of offices there should be headquarters more But why the fuck would you create big cities around some kind of factories? I need, I understand like factory workers need to be there. They're going to live like, near it. But not all are they going to be factory workers. Major infrastructure, major you know factories and things should not be close to a proper city, because like you know at the war times that's going to be a threat. Major metro areas can't really evacuate, but emergency broadcasts are being sent out to shelter in place and away from windows. Radiation exposure for intact population centers is highly dependent on the weather over the next week. We oh, yeah. might be looking at dozens of millions of deaths by the end of the month. For the next few minutes, we can still respond, but you need to decide. We've got 1,500 warheads across our silos, bombers, and submarines. The 400 in silos need to be launched now before they get taken out. 46 nuclear capable bombers on high alert can be ready to take off in 2 minutes. Well, we submarines. need to transmit the order right away to get them out of the blast radius if you want to consider using them. Of our 40 nuclear submarines, 5 are presently at sea. While they're submerged, they're undetectable. So that's our backup for a nuclear retaliation if we lose our silos and bombers. We could try to use them to bomb out their remaining silo fields before they can launch them. The sooner you commit to it, the better the chance we have of preventing a further exchange after our retaliation. Yeah, see the uh, the submarines are the best thing when you want to launch a nuke, and I'll tell you why. See, people have this like a uh, whole mentality like all these ICBMs look at that it will just destroy the earth. Like there is no defense against it or something. Yeah, there are defense against it. Right, there are many uh, ballistic, anti-ballistic missile uh, things. People, even India has it. Right, so efficiency of if a ICBM will hit a country is not that high, right? And if ICBM comes from a long distance, it can be detected very easily, right? And uh, most countries can just take that out in in space before it can even re-enter the atmosphere. So yeah, it depends on who you're launching it against, right? I think Russia was Russia was the first. I don't know who was the first, but I'm pretty sure in the early '90s somebody developed this anti-ICBM uh, technology. Yeah, so many major countries have it. Nuclear uh, attack from submarines are the best because if you can get very close to a country that you want to bomb, and you launch a rocket from there, there isn't going to be that much time to you know I guess uh, defend against, right? Even if you destroy the missile, it'll be so close it will probably do the damage anyway. Right, that's why submarines are the best. Submarines goes undetected mostly and can go close to any country that you want to attack and just attack it from there. That's why uh, the nuclear submarines are the. Whenever some some country gets a nuclear submarine, that's like okay, in military wise, it's like a big thing, right? It is considered really powerful. Updates: We have radar confirmation that the enemy ICBMs have completed their burn and deployed their warheads. Our best guess is that each missile will deploy at least six re-entry vehicles, about 600 in total, which is the part that carries a warhead back into the atmosphere during its terminal descent onto the target. And with many more decoys on top of that, inflatable balloons meant to waste any anti-missiles. We're now tracking nearly 4,000 potential targets. Our anti-ballistic missiles have been launched and will begin their intercept in another minute. We'll do our best to protect the capital, although there really is no defence. Wait, confirming a partial radar blackout. Our systems seem to be. Oh yeah, that is true, right? I mean, it depends on that. Like, if somebody does, like I said, anti-ballistic missile systems are there, right? You can stop an ICBM in that way, right? It depends on like how fast you respond, and it's not that perfect system. But I think if you're good enough, you can stop a ballistic missile coming. But at the same time, if they like uh, destroy your satellites and you know, uh, jam all your signals, and you don't know where the satellites come, where and what. That's why people say like, whenever the war starts, first attack is going to be against like GPSs and things like that. Satellites are gonna get destroyed. If somebody is thinking of proper proper attack against a major country, first you know most advanced things will go like uh, satellites and jamming devices and things like that. So you're blind essentially, military wise, you're blind, and then they can do this kind of attack. Right, because it, it, whenever you obviously there's going to be other things they can use to you know basically detect this missile, but those things will not be efficient enough for you to stop those missiles. So there is that.
We must have anticipated we'd launch our interceptors and pre-detonated a few warheads at high altitude. That ionizes the atmosphere and creates radar interference. Our interceptors should still operate okay. They've had a 55% success rate in tests, but never with this many decoys or with radar interference this intense. We might shoot down 50 objects, but there's no guarantee they're warheads. It looks like most bombs are going to get through. Mm. This I guess is our that last number, chance yeah. to counterattack. We're out of time. Our silo launch sequence takes five minutes. We have to transmit and confirm a launch order, and the missile needs time to clear the blast radius of the incoming bomb. This is a lot to take in, but the warp plan is made. You just need to enter the launch authorization codes and push this button to transmit them. You can't do anything else to save more of our people. If you don't launch now, then this war will be over before it even begins. You understand, this is our one chance, right? The effect? Enemy civilian casualties are hard to estimate, but should be similar to ours. A few million right away, perhaps a few tens of billion. Did you see his <laughs> his clothes flicker, flickered because the green screen is also same as the, his clothes or something? That's a good effect. And by the end of the month, <laughs> the total fallout from their attacks and ours might trigger a nuclear winter, potentially might? killing billions around the world. But that might happen even if we don't retaliate. Might? I'm sure you have questions, way too many but you have to give orders without expecting answers right now. With an attack of this scale, there's no guarantee communications or assets will be intact in a few minutes. We're out of time. We I need a decision at this sir. point. Can we launch? Here is something truly See the great thing about this is uh, military generals are known for like a harsh decision and you know extreme measures. I like how they're capturing that here like a uh, military general just saying, just press the button, just press the button. The guy is actually like president or whatever is actually like thinking about it like I can just take your word. You're like this is your thing, right? This is a whole, your, your whole principle and your whole discipline is based on that, like harsh accents. So, hmm, I don't know how to think about it. <laughs> Nuclear wars aren't regular wars. They only last minutes, and in times of crisis, small conflicts can rapidly spiral out of control. Yeah, Cuba and from small communication lags to sensor errors to just uncertainty in the fog of war mean that no leader will ever have a complete idea of what's happening as a crisis unfolds. Mm. When tensions are high, accidents or misunderstandings can steer leaders, even those with good intentions, to launch a nuclear attack. Confused and with incomplete information, a single person are you sure though are you sure like we think this all the time and it makes sense but uh, the one thing cuban missile crisis tells us that even a, a, an official of a submarine who's been told like you have to launch the missiles because everything's going to shit i guess still knowingly how dangerous a missile it can't launch it and it was better because i was like a, you know there was no nuclear war right yeah, so they, they didn't send the missile and pre pre just one guy, one guy saying like, don't do this in a submarine prevented a major nuclear war during the time of Cuban Missile Crisis. And everybody was edgy at the time, right? On the edge constantly. This was Cold War. So just one guy did that, right? Because uh, he was in charge of actually sending the missile. And when the time came to it, he didn't. So even though we, we like to just sitting here, like to think like, oh, just like people can panic and just launch missile. Are we sure about that? Because as soon as like somebody's the one with the trigger, realize like what is the effect of this missile is might not do it, right? It might not in him to do that basically. So yeah, I don't know. Yes, it's really just one single person who decides can literally make civilization ending decisions, killing hundreds of millions of people in the time it takes to watch a YouTube video. This story is fiction, but Still the world came very close to this several times. I feel like this would not happen. In 1995, Russian radar detected a submarine launch missile, and their nuclear forces went on full alert, except it was actually a scientific rocket to study auroras. In 1979, US computers reported a full-scale Soviet attack with only minutes to respond, except it was a training tape being incorrectly loaded into a computer. In 1983, the Soviet satellite alert system showed five ICBMs launched from the US. Yeah. But it was a false alarm caused by sunlight reflected on clouds. Yeah, were clouds. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, a Soviet submarine with no contact to Moscow for several days concluded that nuclear war had begun and decided to launch a nuclear torpedo. Luckily, the authorization of three officers was required. One of them, Vasily Ashipov, opposed it. Yeah, but just one guy. what if he hadn't? Any safeguard can fail, no matter how carefully designed it might be. And decisions are being made right now to build new weapons and missile systems that commit the world More to... More fucked up thing is that Vasily guy, most people don't know about that, I don't know the name. 
that name should be like really important. Like this one, like of all the accents, this was the accent. This was Cold War, right? If they launched the missile that said like U U.S. Uh, Russia is on war now, nuclear war, like that that would have been end, right? So this should be like a major point. You can rarely find in history one one person at one point having just one decision having this kind of an effect. So this name should be like really big, but people don't know it. To another century of nuclear stalemate, complicated further by China's emergence as a new nuclear superpower. Simply accepting that the existence of nuclear weapons is inevitable might mean their use is inevitable. But the world doesn't have to be this way. Even incremental steps taking apart one bomb at a time will eventually result in a world with none. During the Cold War, the world had over 70,000 nuclear weapons. Through arms reduction treaties, that number is now about 12,500. Progress is not guaranteed, but it's also not impossible. I don't think it will ever be zero, right? And I feel like zero might be disastrous as well. I think you need to re reduce it uh, really, really at small numbers. Extremely small numbers, but even then they're still there, so it would be a threat. But I feel like without nuclear bombs, uh, the peace we had after World War II, up until now, would not have been there, right? So nuclear weapons are kind of important. It, it ended the war. Uh, but I don't think zeroing that number is also good, right? Possible. Governments and militaries are not separate from their nations. They're part of them, just like you. You have the power to make demands of your leaders, and often this begins with just being aware of an issue. If you want to learn more, we've compiled a number of resources for you in the video description and our sources. This video was supported by Open Philanthropy. Yup, there you go. Yeah, it's like in the end, at the basic level, like you have the power in democracy, right? It depends on you. Obviously, like there are many loopholes and things that uh, senators and all the different politicians exploit that uh, people of uh, many people's need just get taken aside. But if the majority of the country uh, decides on something and just makes it an issue, they have to do something about it because they're supposed to be, uh, the, you know, someone who listens to people. It's a dem democracy, right? They're supposed to uh, see the needs of the people. But yeah. Uh, Obviously, U.S. and in the end, more of a republic than anything else. And, you know, elect electoral college and everything basically states that. But still, if the, it becomes a major issue, yeah. How nuclear war start? I, th I don't think a nuclear war will start. And I feel like the recent conflict has tell us that people will not use nuclear, war by war, uh, nuclear weapons immediately. I think if, even if war starts one by one, nukes would not be the one thing that they start with. It might be the end, but even then it's not, because people would rather surrender than go with nukes, because that, that means the opposing guy can also use nukes, which means everything around you will get destroyed. Your country will be completely destroyed. So people would rather, I guess, uh, you know, uh, surrender than they would use nuke. That's, that's what I think, right? That's what I'm hoping, let's just say. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. Like, we like to think like, it was very easy to launch nuke. People just press the button. And the Cuban Missile Crisis thing just gives me hope, right? That people will not press the button immediately. But who the fuck knows? Yeah, ICBMs can be destroyed too, but I don't know the efficiency rate of that, like how easily can it be destroyed, how easy, how good defense is against that, again that. I guess it depends on the time and accuracy. But yeah, I think submarines are the biggest threat because they can get really close to you and launch a nuke and they, I don't think you can defend against that. That's the most fucked up thing. That's why in every movie, like somebody shows like a nuclear submarine, this war oh, is a nuclear submarine, it's because of this reason. Like it can move. Right? And it can get close to you. Like, that's the most fucked up thing, right? Yeah. All right, well, that was how a nuclear war will start. Minute by minute by channel Kursus in Nutshell. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, if you found a mistake in anything I say or misunderstood whatever I say, comment down and I guess, you know, uh, I'll reply if I made a mistake or if I was wrong. I'll know it, I guess. And yeah, I'll see you next time.